time for member statements. I recognize the member for Cambridge. Thank you, Madam Speaker. So today I would like to speak about Porchlight Counseling and Addiction Services. What began in 1940 as a community support group for families that suffered losses during the Second World War has become a beacon of hope for many individuals and families in Cambridge and North Dumfries. Porchlight Counseling Addiction Services offers a wide range of support to those young and old in need of help with addictions, family relationships, anxiety, and depressions. Led by Executive Director Cameron Dearlove, Porchlight is a safe space where counseling and addiction services are improving the lives of countless people in my riding. Porchlight has many funding partners to assist the delivery of its programs, but still counts on the generosity of donors and successful fundraising events. This coming Saturday, Cambridge Moves for the Mental Health will be held in support of Porchlight. The event will kick off at Cambridge Center, or excuse me, Civil, Civic Square, followed by a walk through historical downtown Galt. Those who can't participate can still donate by contacting the center. In my role as MPP, I've witnessed firsthand the good work that Porchlight does for Cambridge and North Dumfries, as well as the level of support it has done among our residents. I want to thank Cameron and his team and wish them good luck in raising the $25,000 goal they have set for this weekend's event. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements, the member for Niagara Centre. Thank you, Speaker. April is Autism Awareness Month. According to the Ontario Autism Coalition, there are over 60,000 children waiting for core services. After six years of broken promises, so many children are now aging out of the eligibility requirement for the Ontario Autism Program after receiving no core services. Just the other week, I spoke to Thorold resident Angela Doso, whose autistic son Jonathan, 18 years old, has now aged out of the program. As we sat at Angela's kitchen table, he told me that Jonathan was diagnosed with low-functioning autism when he was three years old. He's turned 18, is now considered an adult, but cannot care for himself. But Angelo says Jonathan is now on Developmental Service Ontario's housing list. The waiting period could be anywhere from two to 10 years. Speaker, the Ontario Autism Coalition is here at Queen's Park tomorrow. It is my hope that government members will listen and meet with delegates and parents like Angelo to educate themselves on the resources and investments needed to address this crisis. We can do better for Jonathan and his family. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Ajax. Thank you, Speaker. Today, I want to welcome Inspector Sean Cotter and Detective Sergeant Michael Baglow in the, in the audience today. I would like to take the time to acknowledge the life-saving efforts of Durham Regional Police and the officers that work in West Division. On January 16, fire and police responded to a fire in a two-story home in Ajax, where three individuals were trapped inside. Officers arrived on scene, scaled the backyard fence, and heard a woman calling from the second floor, who was holding a three-year-old child. The officers communicated with the mother in a very chaotic situation and encouraged her to drop the child to the officers below. One of these officers was there to catch the toddler amid toxic smoke and flames. Luckily, the child only suffered minor injuries. Unfortunately, the father remains in hospital and the mother is recovering from her injuries. This is just one example of the dedicated and heroic actions that our police officers perform day after day. The Solicitor General and I had the opportunity with MPP Cole to visit West Division to say thank you to these officers. I want to give a shout out to the team, Constable Williams Woodstock, who caught the child, Constable Josh Brown, Constable Nathan Fullard, Fulford, Constable J Joseph Lang, Constable Jacob O'Hara, Constable Hassan Sh Sharif, Constable Mark Alcorn, Detective Constable Hannah Ellican, and Constable Richard Armstrong. Thank you for all you do every day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Waterloo. 
Thank you, Speaker. I'm honoured to rise today to speak about a very important issue that is setting a dangerous precedent here in Ontario, the expropriation of prime farmland in Wilmot Township. Back in March, Wilmot farmers were told of the region's plans to purchase 770 acres of land of their land. If the landowners refused to sell, they were told that their land would be expropriated. Remember that Waterloo's region's official plan accommodated all anticipated growth in the region until 2051 without significant farmland loss. This government's current legislation makes it possible for what is happening in Wilmot to happen anywhere in Ontario with no transparency and no community consultation. Uh, the region is actually right now operating under an NDA. There are no answers, no information coming from the regional level of government. Stuart Snyder, a landowner and a farmer, says, and I quote, something's not right. We're not just being mistreated as farmers and landowners, but the whole community is being left in the dark about what's going on. On Friday, uh, the NDP leader and other NDP MPPs, including myself, held a town hall in Wilmot, and almost 500 people attended. This is very clearly Greenbelt 2.0. We, the official opposition, will get to the bottom of this, just like we did with the Green Belt, and we will continue to fight for farmers in Wilmot. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Simcoe Gray. Good morning, Speaker. I rise this morning to salute and pay tribute to a distinguished resident of Simcoe Gray, Chad Bark, who passed away this month at the age of 99. Chad was a true member of our greatest generation. He was a gentleman, an accomplished athlete, a decorated World War II veteran, a devoted husband and father, and a friend. Chad, his wife Lynn, and their four children, Barbara, Susan, John, and Don, were family friends and our neighbours in Toronto, in the Toronto neighbourhood that I grew up in. In 1944, at the age of 18, Chad enlisted, hoping to be a pilot. However, he was deemed ineligible because he was colourblind and joined the Army Corps. He was shipped to England in the spring of 19, 1944, arriving on May 6, one month before the D-Day invasion. Chad was assigned to the Signal Corps and the Cipher Group, where his job was to create and decipher codes to ensure communications were secure on the front lines. After celebrating VE Day in Manchester, England, he returned home to work in his father's business, marry his sweetheart Lynn, and raise four children. A proud Canadian, Chad was a candidate in the 1974 federal election running as a progressive conservative under the leadership of Robert Stanfield, the best prime minister we never had. I am so proud to say that I worked in his campaign putting up Chad Bark signs. It was my first foray into politics, and clearly it made an impression. I had the great fortune to reconnect with Chad 48 years later when campaigning in the last provincial election. He was a constituent living in Allison and returned the favour by campaigning vigorously in his senior's home where he organized a meet and greet. Speaker, my condolences to the Bark family on the passing of this remarkable man. Farewell and Godspeed, Chad. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. Everyone has the right to an affordable home, but in my community, it's harder than ever to find that affordable home. Oshawa has experienced some of the most dramatic rent increases in the province. Between 2014 and 2023, the cost of renting increased by 61 per cent. That's more than Toronto and nearly four times the government's rent increase guideline. My office regularly hears from families, students and seniors who are struggling to find safe and suitable housing that fits their budget. The money people used to be able to spend in our community or save for the future is now going towards keeping the roof over their heads. This affordability crisis has left too many people out in the cold. The region of Durham has reported a 67 per cent increase in homelessness over the past year. The John Howard Society of Durham Region has worked with our unsheltered neighbours for years. Their Director of Housing Services, Geralda Bray, told the CBC, quote, we were able to find housing in the past, and we were able to house at least some people, but now we're finding it just so difficult to house people because they can't afford it." End quote. We have to do better, Speaker. People deserve safe, clean, accessible homes that they can afford. We need public, non-profit and cooperative housing. We need non-market housing. We need fourplexes and real rent control. The Ontario NDP is calling on this government to get back to building homes, not just talking. People in Oshawa want to see government do something real about this housing crisis. Housing is not a developer wish list. Housing is a human right. Thank you. Thank you. 
Member statements. The member for Halliburton, Kawartha Lakes, Brook. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I was happy to attend the recent Kawartha Lakes Dairy Producers Annual Banquet and Awards at the Woodville Legion. We got to honour and thank our local farmers for producing such high-quality milk, most of which is delivered directly to Kawartha Dairy, where it is made into their most famous product, Kawartha Dairy Ice Cream, which we've all enjoyed right here in the Legislature and across the province. Our featured speaker was Kawartha Dairy's General Manager, Brian Kerr, who highlighted their plans for continued expansion in Ontario. With 11 stores across the province, the most recent in Burlington, where their first month sales projections were met in just eight days. Not surprising. Two more stores will also be opening soon, one in Coburg and one in the Danforth. Their success is not only about the taste, but the experience shared by generations of families, the best marketing tool you can have. Kawartha Dairy is in its 87th year, 100% owned by the Crow family, embodying the legacy of quality and service. Kawartha Dairy was also named Canada's safest manufacturing employer and Canada's safest employer for young workers in 2023. They've developed extensive training and me mentorship programs and employ 225 full-time staff and provide jobs to 200 students annually. I'm always proud to be the MPP that represents Kawartha Dairy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Speaker. On Friday, hundreds of residents from all across Waterloo Region gathered in Wilmot to uh, speak for farmers to protect our farmland. With the Get It Done Act, we are getting it done wrong. The disrespect to our farming communities through policies that encourage expropriation, threaten good planning, and prevent sprawl are overriding regional planning. They threaten our groundwater, making it saltier and threatening the recharge. And it has the speculators circling, making farmland prices explode and threatening the future of this $50 billion economy. The 500 people who gathered in Wilmot rallied together in support of our farming community. Order. Order. Member statements for Flamborough Glanbrook. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. It is my absolute pleasure to rise today to discuss a recent funding announcement in my riding of Flamborough Glanbrook. On April 12th, alongside the Minister of Education, I announced that our government is investing over $31 million in the Hamilton Wentworth District School Board for the new Waterdown Bay Elementary School and an addition to Mount Hope Elementary School. Mr. Speaker, this investment will support the creation of 682 student spaces and 176 licensed childcare spaces for my community. Parents and representatives from the Hamilton Wentworth District School Board have been influential throughout the process. They have been strong advocates for our community and demonstrated our need for this funding. Due to its unlimited potential, Flamborough Glanbrook is one of the fastest growing communities right across Ontario. By investing in early learning, we are laying the foundation for the next generation of leaders and innovators to build on this success. Schools and access to childcare are important for Ontario's students and parents. Our students deserve to learn in state of the art modern facilities. Mr. Speaker, our government recognizes the importance of getting new schools and expansions to existing schools built as quickly as possible for our growing communities. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements, the member for Essex. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on Sunday I had the pleasure of going to a brand new cafe in my riding. It's the King Street Cafe. It's in Harrow, Ontario and it's being opened by my constituents, Lisa and Jeff. On my way, I got a call from one of my constituent friends who was supposed to meet me there. She said she got pink eye and she couldn't make it, so she was gonna go see a doctor to get a prescription for her pink eye. I said, you don't have to do that. You can go straight to a pharmacist. She said, are you sure? I said, of course I'm sure. 
You don't need a prescription from a doctor for pink eye. Go straight to your pharmacist and get treatment. Well, sure enough, 20 minutes later, that constituent called me back. She said she got her treatment. She was very happy that she didn't have to go to a doctor, and now she is recovering from that very minor ailment. In fact, Mr. Mr. Speaker, in Ontario, you can get treatment for 19 common ailments, uh, including pink eye, diaper rash, insect bites, hay fever, and acne. It's all about getting convenient care closer to you where and when you need it. And that's important for my constituents in Essex County because we live in a rural area and we would rather go to a pharmacist rather than wasting a trip to the doctor for something simple like that. So I would like to thank the Minister of Health for introducing this very practical and useful program that makes health more accessible and easier to get for my constituents in Essex County. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning. Introduction of business.